seven. Barrett outside, the switch. Donchich goes, oh, what a great step! Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope you guys are doing well. There's going to be no sugar coating in this video. I'm not just going to be negative to be negative. I'm going to be completely real with you guys after tonight. So the New York Knicks entered the 2022 NBA draft with the 11th overall pick of the first round and the 42nd pick of the second round. And with the 42nd pick of the 2022 NBA draft, we actually went on to select Trevor Keels, the forward from Duke. I looked at him a little bit and I actually watched a few Duke games because they were pretty stacked at a lot of positions and one of the main reasons they were able to go to the tournament you know very good chemistry just a very well coached team of course and when you watch Trevor Keels he's not a really great offensive player he only shot 41 percent from the field 31 32 percent from downtown doesn't have the greatest of touch but I could see why the Knicks liked him Tom Thibodeau likes mentally tough players this dude dives on the floor brings a lot of energy He's just a contagious player out there on the floor when it comes to his energy and his basketball IQ. He does the little things out there on the floor that impact winning basketball. But at the end of the day, will he probably be in the G League? Will he probably not play a lot when it comes to the log jam at the forward position and other positions for versatility? Yeah, he probably will not play Trevor Keels, if I'm being completely real with you guys. But I wish him the best of luck, and I hope he does carve out a role, and he continues to work hard, and he impresses Tom Thibodeau. But when it comes to the 11th overall pick, I felt we were stuck in a really weird position. I said this from the beginning when I made a video on Johnny Davis. Johnny Davis, I'm going to make a video on him, but he may not be there. A lot of people were saying he was going to be there, and I hate to be right. I don't like to be one of those people. I told you so. I told you so. No, I wanted Johnny Davis to be there because he's an absolute dog. He has the potential to be a three-level scorer. I think his form's a lot better. Like, his form is really good, and he has potential to be a good three-point shooter. I think... Him shooting 30% from three, shot like 35, 36% the year before. I think he has the capability of being better when it comes to his form. Defense is not keying in on him as much. Pressure taken off him when it comes to Washington. Them having threats of Beal out there on the floor, having threats outside, out there as well with Porzingis. But we know how he's able to get after it defensively. He brings a lot to the table when it comes to shot creation-wise, and I felt we needed that. Obviously, Dyson Daniels wasn't there. A lot of guys I liked, like Matherin, wasn't there, but I wasn't expecting him to be there. Same thing with Dyson Daniels. The Knicks were stuck in a really weird spot, and the Knicks were projected to bring back Mitch, or were projected to bring back Mitch. We'll see what goes on to happen. Jalen Duran was on the board. Mark Williams was on the board. The Knicks liked A.J. Griffin. He was on the board. And I was really shocked when I saw... Usman Jang from New Zealand played for the NBL. Same thing with Josh Giddy, LaMelo Ball. But I was like, the Knicks need to make a splash. We need to get a high upside type of talent. And yeah, possibly we would have made the same mistake with Usman Jang. Not played him. We're, we're going to be on patient with him. But obviously he was a guy that didn't have a lot of production. Got better towards the end of the season. 6'10", can handle the ball. He has potential to be a difficult shot maker. He gets after it defensively. Good vision, good mechanics, just... He has to put it all together. He's one of those players you have to believe in his mental makeup, and you have to believe in the kid, and I actually think he went to a good situation of Oklahoma City. They're going to let him do his thing out there on the floor. We'll see what goes on to happen, and I actually thought they had a pretty good draft when it came to talent-wise with Chad Holmgren. They got some length over there. Pogoshevsky, Shea, they're a lanky team for sure, but the New York Knicks went on to actually trade that pick, and I was like, okay, okay, maybe we're trading back. We collected assets and the Thunder of the 12th pick, so maybe we got that as well. But no, we didn't end up selecting in the first round. We didn't select anyone in the first round at all. I'm like, okay, we didn't make the playoffs. We need talent. Maybe they didn't like anyone on the board, but you still trade back. Like, for someone in the first round, no, we just straight up traded out of the spot for draft capital. And I know some New York Knicks fans that were excited, like, oh, we got three future first-round draft picks. But when you take a look at the details of what teams we got them from and what went on to happen on draft night, and if we don't utilize the picks, it really means nothing at all. And this team needs talent. We need it-factor type of talent. We need shooters. We need defensive players. I think we need more shot creators as well. But A.J. Griffin's there. I thought you guys liked him. Shot 45% from three. You haven't seen his peak of athleticism. Maybe there's more upside than people think. You know Adrian Griffin, who was the assistant coach of the Toronto Raptors. I thought that was a Tibbs type of player. But Leon Rose got too cute, in my opinion. We didn't end up with anyone out of this draft that puts R.J. in the position to be successful. Obi in the position to be successful. It's just a waste of development. Noel's still here. Burks is still here. Randall's still here. I expect Randall to be back. And... Yes, we did go on to move on from someone that we didn't want here anymore, but it was in an interesting situation and we could have dealt with it differently. But right now, does Leon Rose have a direction? 
I'm so lost right now. We're in the middle of nowhere. I feel like we're trying to compete, but collect assets as well. Like, we still need young talent. He was talking about building a longevity consistent winner. I understand he's trying to do it by collecting assets, but I don't think you necessarily do it this way. And quickly needs to start, or actually it doesn't even matter because we're going after Jalen Brunson. That's one of the main reasons we're freeing up, freeing up cap space and getting just draft capital. We're going to be getting into this, but the Knicks are going after Brunson. We obviously hired Rick Brunson. Dallas is confident they're going to bring Jalen Brunson back, but this would be the most Knicks thing ever if they think they can compete with Jalen Brunson, who I like, but I don't think he moves the needle like crazy. He improves the team, but he doesn't move the needle. And if we splurge money on him, I personally don't think he's worth that. He's a good player, but that's not a good investment in my opinion. You think Brunson, RJ, and Randall are going to do something for your team? Like, we already have this predictability of the offense. Tibbs makes a lack of adjustments. RJ would have to make a massive leap for this to work out, which I hope he does, obviously. But when you just take a look at this right here, we don't even know if Mitch is coming back. I'm so lost with this team. Obi's here, Randall's like Randall's still here. Like, why? Uh, again, I don't even think we're getting Ivy because the Kings were so locked in on Keegan. But at one point, why are the Knicks so hesitant to give up quickly if you're going after Bronson anyway? If you don't believe in quickly to be a starting point guard. I'm not saying he would be a starting point guard, but why are you so hesitant? But let's get into this right here. The Knicks trade the 11th pick to OKC. OKC trades three first. The 2023 Denver pick. Denver's going to be big, um, good. Jamal Murray comes back. Michael Ford Jr. back from injury. Jokic, 2023 Detroit. I don't really believe they're going to be good. Even though I think they're going to be fun to watch. There's going to be some progression. <laughs> but they're still going to be young and inexperienced. And 2023 Washington. They're in an interesting situation with Beal, Porzingis. They got Davis now. But there's protections on all of the picks. But I'm interested to see how the protections really are. Top 14 protected, top 8 protected, and all that. But the Knicks go on to trade the 2023 Denver first rounder. And four seconds, four second round picks. Leon Rose's beloved second round draft picks to Charlotte for the 13th pick. We don't even select with the 13th pick. And the Knicks trade the 13th pick to Detroit. They end up selecting Durant. And we trade Kemba to Detroit for Milwaukee's 2025 first. And Detroit actually ends up buying out Kemba. Why couldn't we just buy out Kemba? I'm not a GM. I'm not a president of basketball operations. But that seems like common sense in my opinion. I don't know why we had to give up a future first. Or future first four seconds to end up like buying out Kemba. So basically the Knicks traded pick 11, Kemba, and four seconds for three future protected first and cap space. And it, there's no definite answer. We're going to end up getting Brunson. We've freed up cap space to get guys before. That didn't work out. And this isn't even a big fish, too. This isn't even a, this isn't even a big fish we're going after here. They'll be going after Brunson, who can command up to or demand up to $100 million. They still need some more cap space to get that money as well. We're not even done. Like We still need to get rid of Noel and or Burks. This isn't even going to be an exciting season because there's still no direction here. If if they really believed in a longevity consistent winner, you see what you get out of Obi. You see what Cam really is. I know he has to stay healthy. That's kind of holding him back from having a role in the NBA. You get players that complement RJ. Randall doesn't complement RJ. Like, I know Randall's hard to move on from, but this Knicks team doesn't care about building it the right way. Like, freaking Weaver of the Pistons took over last offseason. They already got two future stars, in my opinion, of Ivy and Cunningham. The Knicks have potentially one future star. Knicks have no direction. We're in mediocrity. I'm lost with Leon Rose right now. I'm freaking lost. I don't even know what to say. RJ's the only one keeping me sane right now. He has to have a big year. Just, I'm just reading all these comments on these Instagram posts of just the Knicks and all that, but I'm reading this comment a lot for Brunson. Do we even feel he'll get, he'll gel well with this group of players, feel like we need more of a lead, worthy point guard? Yep, I agree with that guy. Let me know down below your thoughts. Peace out, y'all.